Hello, hello, and uh, welcome to the evening stream. I uh, I'm trying out some new things here. Um, so you may have noticed everything's different. That's because I'm not at home anymore. I'm uh, well, I'm home. I'm back home in Iceland. So stream's gonna be a bit different today. We're gonna do the same content, but we'll be doing it from here. Hey, little Annie. My number one fan. Um, I hope uh, the audio is okay. I tried fiddling with it a bit, but you know, we haven't tried it with this setup, so it might take a couple of sessions to get it working, but it sounded okay to me in the recording. Um, and I hope it'll be good for you on the stream as well. My internet connection isn't quite the same as it is back uh, back in Sweden, but... And as you can see, I have no green screen here. But, you know, I hope... I hope this will be good. The setup is also going to be different. Um, this is a Windows computer, but... Due to company policy, I... am not allowed to update it to the latest version. So I can't run VSL2. The Windows Linux subsystem. So... We're going to be developing Haskell on Windows. And we're going to be doing it... Um, we're going to be compiling and running in PowerShell. Which is not quite as nice as, you know, regular Bash. But, you know, we're going to make it work. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to check out Day 13. Like the latest one. We're going to see if... If that one actually, like, does it, does it, does it depend on day 11 or day 12? If it does not, then we're going to write it, run it. But if it does, then we're going to just start off a day, you know, 11 or 12. And, uh, okay, sweet. So it doesn't. All right, so we'll just jump into day 13 then. And then the plan is later to kind of catch up. We're going to, we're going to do a marathon or something like that, you know. Four hours doing 11 and 12 and the six hours doing the current days. I don't know Maybe next weekend. We'll see Let's see uh, Start with the problem admin of code. I think I'm not logged in here but Let me just do that Do 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 sign in Everything pre-filled, but I have a security key Make sure You have security keys All right, we're logged in. Safety first, you know? So, 14. Oh, okay. Why is the order is all weird? All right. We're not gonna, we're not gonna stop because the order is weird. Let's see. Shuttle search. All right. Your ferry can make it back, can make it safely to a nearby port. Oh no, wait. Did the plane crash? Oh shit. Spoiler alert! I think the plane crashed. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> Damn, okay. Okay, An book another ship? Or did it like... Did it... Did the plane like land on a different airport or something? I don't know. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna be finding out, but you know... To me, this is crazy. Alright. Also, guys uh, and gals, let me know on chat, like, if the internet is not... If, like, if there's something wrong with the setup, because I haven't... I spent, you know, 10 days fine-tuning the other one, and now... Starting all over. Wait, let me... I have one more light. Better? Doesn't change anything? I don't think so. But the setup looks good. This is a mic. This is a Rode Video Mic NTG. And you can connect uh, connect it through USB to the... So I don't have a sound card. I don't have that fancy mic. I don't have the fancy headphones. But, you know, I think if it looks fine to you all, then that's all that matters, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, shuttle bus service is available to bring you from the seat port to the airport. To the, uh, each bus has an ID number that also indicates how often the bus leaves from the airport. 
Most characters are defined based on a timestamp that measures the number of minutes since some fixed reference point in the past. At timestamp zero, every bus segment only departed from the seaboard. After that, each bus travels to the airport, then various other locations, and finally returns to the seaport. Okay? The time this loop takes for a particular bus is also its ID number. The bus with ID 5 departs from the seaport, timestamp 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on. 11. Okay, so I think we're, we're going to be doing some modulus probably. Okay, if you are there when the bus departs, you can ride that bus to the airport. Wow. It's a lot of input. Uh, okay, we're going to have to ride a parser. Uh, and I hope... I hope we can use Parsec or something. Let's see. I mean, okay. But it's not going to be crazy much input, right? Let's see. Uh, two lines. The first line is your estimate of the earliest timestamp you could depart on a bus. Second line lists the bus IDs that are... Wait, so... Okay, your notes consists of two lines. Oh, okay. We don't have to parse this input. This is the input. All right, I see. First line is your estimate of the earliest time spent you could depart on a bus. Second line lists the bus IDs that are in service according to the shuttle entries. Shuttle company. Entries that show X must be out of service, so you decide to ignore them. To save time once you arrive, your goal is to figure out the earliest bus you can take to the airport. There will be exactly one such bus. Okay. So we start at 939. I, I'm, are we just going to be figuring out like what the yeah 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 also like you you all are like the chat is now on like a tiny screen <laughs> or tiny it's on my laptop screen and then I have a big screen over here I can't see the chat as well so speak up <laughs> use caps and I can definitely see it uh no nah, I'm kidding I'll, I'll just make this thing bigger here wait hold on um uh, Screen is so small, I have to use all my hard-earned CSGO. CSGO? I never played CSGO. My hard-earned CS 1.3 skills to catch that exact pixel where I have to grab it. <laughs> Caps lock is cruise control for cool. This guy reads bash.org, right? Sorry, right, I'm drinking skir. It is an Icelandic drink. Oh, and also my camera doesn't focus now because it's too focused on me. This is the shizzle. Let me actually, let me, let me jump, jump out. I'm going to grab my coffee. I mean, we, I'm just, I just turned coffee into code, you know? I'm no longer at home. I don't have the mooming cups, but I do have. Oh my god. Star Wars cups. Wow. What an epic cup, Maddie. Yeah, my, I, I'm at my dad's place. He's, uh, he's lent me his place for the duration of my quarantine, actually. He's pretty nice. One last thing, rats swore. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I mirrored the camera because I'm. I'm looking at you, and then I'm looking at the stream, and then it's so weird to see me non mirrored. So, if you meet me on the street, my hair will look like this. Just so you know. All right. One last thing I want to point out before I start. Look at this T-shirt. What is this T-shirt? It's a woolen t-shirt, hand knit by my grandma. Yeah, that is it's the most Icelandic you can get in a t-shirt, a hand knitted woolen t-shirt. And you know, I just gotta represent grandma on stream, you know? Anyway, uh, we have the following notes. 7, 13, 59, 31, 19. Uh, the earliest bus you can take to the airport uh earliest bus you can take to the airport 
Okay, so we have these, and then I think, you know, I think what we're going to do is that we're going to take this number, we're going to apply modulus to it, of all of these, and then, and then, and then that's going to be our answer. Uh, we're going to take the modulus, and then we're going to sort by the modulus. Let's see, uh, which is the idea of the earliest present you can take the input multiplied by the number of minutes you'll need to wait for that bus. Let's take the input, let's go. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's gonna be crazy. We're running Windows PowerShell. When I become famous, I'm already famous. I haven't told you guys, I got recognized at the airport from the stream. That means I'm famous, right? Yeah, no, that was, that was like a, that was a very big badge of, I'm like, wow. <laughs> and I was wearing like a mask and a visor and everything, right? This must be what Justin Bieber feels like, you know? Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Of course, you learned Haskell on Windows. Yeah. So. It works. It works pretty good on Windows, except if you're writing like a plugin that's fiddling with the type system. I was doing that, and uh, sometimes it would just it would just randomly crash with some crazy memory exception stuff. Yeah, that was crazy stuff. And the problem with Windows, uh, with running Haskell on Windows. It's not so much the Windows part, it's more that... Wow. <laughs> that is brave. That is so brave. Yeah, I'm using... I'm using like the hard... Like, I don't... I, I just install... I don't know how I installed it. I don't remember. I just remember that I did it to get the IDE working. And then on my other main laptop, you know, I did this in like March, right? And then I haven't used this laptop since March because I've just been home. I've had access to my main machine. And around that time, VSL2 came out and just running when uh, running G Haskell on that is so good. That's just, mm, it's the best programming environment, okay? Having VS Code on Windows, SSHing, or like it's connecting directly to the Linux machine. Oh. But uh, I'm not allowed to upgrade. Let's say make dear day 13. See? This is the cool thing about the PowerShell I'm using. PowerShell. It's. Oh uh, shit. Yeah, in Windows they do like this. Uh, anyway, this is like. what? What is this PowerShell? It is PowerShell 6. And the nice thing is that like a lot of these make dare and copy and move and all that stuff, they've like defined that as synonyms. Because you know, you don't make do like you write some PowerShell thing that says make dear. And you know, PowerShell, you know, it's good. It's like an object oriented command line scripting language. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. But you know, I just I've just spent you know, eight years studying the the power of Bash, right? And and not just Bash, but you know all the new GNU utilities, right? I mean, because I'm using Linux, or as I like to call it, GNU slash Linux. <laughs> and you know, you know all those utilities, and uh, and you're kind of crippled by uh, by uh, not having those so they kind of define synonyms for everything so i can write ls right which is a new linux utility and it does what what the dear.exe command oh wait it's dear like yeah so so you don't have to it's easier to swap around so i recommend it as a development iron all right uh, let's see let's see it into day 13. Let's see if touch is defined. Ugh, see? But some some for some some of the commands are not defined, so yeah. Oh no. New file. Day 13.hs. 
Okay, uh, we're going to say... Test. Input. I'm lagging. I'm doing the dash now. I used to do camel case. Now I'm doing the dash. You gotta mix it up, you know? It's the little things. We got the test input. Now, let's say... Module main where... Wow, you see the lag? Uh, get input. It's going to take a file path and it's going to take a list of stream. Get input equals lines that read. We're going to fmap. This needs to be IO. fmap lines that read the file. Main IO. Main equals. Oh, thanks for the faro. Horrible cow. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Kronko. But, uh. Hey, uh. That's. I, I think, like, that was the first stream or something. Oh, yeah, wow, thanks for the follow. That was the first stream I did. I, like. I had. I was, like, doing fmap over the input, and I was like, what is. What is going wrong? And I was doing the right thing. I just. I had forgotten to say. IO string. Let's see here. We're gonna pipe it into print. And are you ready for this? GHC day 13. And we can't do this because this is PowerShell. We have to do semicolon. Wow, we're getting so many followers. Thank you all for the follows. I really appreciate them. Okay, so we do this and see. Okay, so this is gonna compile and it's linking day13.exe. <laughs> That's so good, right? Wow. So many new followers. I thought I only had like a very limited watch base, but it's a lot of new people, which is nice. Thank you all. Uh, so, so we compile it and then we do measure command and we have to do like this. Uh, we have to do expression and then like this. And then we say day 13. Yeah, we need more Haskell streamers, right? They're all doing something different. Can you even see this? No, but my keyboard is over it, right? I'll run it. Let me see. Do, 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 let me let me split this. See this? Measure command expression day 13 exit. Okay, this will run it and measure the runtime, but it will also pipe it to out default. You know, so instead of just writing time, run the executable, I have to do all this, but you know, it's something. Oh, she, yeah, I know. Okay, this didn't work. I have to do dot slash. Okay, now you can see that it compiled, uh, but it, uh, but like the first time it runs, it runs super slow. So it takes us 25 milliseconds to take in the thing and print it. Now, do I have. I have text.parsec, sweet. Let me see, do I have, do I have, do I have auto parsec? Need more data dot atto. I wanna use auto parsec. Auto parsec is what all cool Haskellers use. Apparently it's like super fast and it has decent error messages. Parsec is not as fast, but has better error, error messages. And uh, then there's something called Byte Smash, which is like insanely fast, but it doesn't actually do like the error message. I don't know. I have never tried these, but the error messages aren't good enough. Uh, but it seems like we don't have at all Parsec. So let's just use Parsec. All right, uh, now we are trying to compile parsec. Uh, parsec hackage. Do, 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 mega parsec. Oh yeah, that is also. So you have parsec, then you have mega parsec. There was like a discussion. Let me Twitter. Uh, I use Twitter a lot, mainly to to connect oh no not not the private messages uh i use them a lot to kind of communicate with other haskellers and i am at treatlo on twitter uh and i have a lot of stuff uh, but oh my god yeah here so 
Vibav, Sagar. I have no, I'm probably, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but uh, he's a legend. And uh, he said, I said, see, Flavio, also a legend. Twitter legend. Twitter Haskell legend. Uh, he says, Parser Combinator. So that's what we're going to be using, Parsec. So, why about it's like, Ado Parsec, life changing. Flavio says, is it better than Mega Parsec? And then a cool smiley. If you're dealing with bystrings, yes. It also has backtracking by default. And I'm like, the noob. I'm like, what's, what's wrong with Parsec? <laughs> Too big. And I'm like, I didn't get the joke because a Ado Parsec is like a Ado, is like a unit. So it's like smaller than Parsec. Too big. It's funny. It's a funny joke. Um, and it, yeah. So an Ado Parsec is included with the Haskell platform. So it's it's good stuff. Um, but if you go to Mega Parsec versus yeah, I mean, so first of all, Mega Parsec is a lot bigger than an Ado Parsec, right? That's the joke. Uh, but oh, it's made by Mark. Mark Amar K KRP. I think it's Krep Kropov. He's also a legend. So many Haskell legends. You know, that's I like it. Uh, Parsec Vegas's Art at Parsec. Yeah. So here's like the, you know. So Ada Parsec is sometimes faster, but not that feature rich. Mega Parsec is better for like human readable text. So yeah. So, but I'm using Parsec because it's installed <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, it's easy, it's easier that way, right? And like, they all look the same and also we're not, so, I mean, Ado Parsec is super fast, right? So if you're running like a graph, so I think that's what Flavio is doing. Like he's you're running, like a, he's building a GraphQL server called Moo in Haskell, right? And there, you know, you have to parse the query, bam, like that. And uh, and you need it. You need it fast. Still a dumbass. What? What? Wow. I am followed on Twitter, and I'm apparently a legend. But yeah, there's a lot of cool people in the Haskell community. That's what I like about it. They're all all super nice. But none of them are streaming. Can you imagine if Simon Payton Jones just started streaming live Haskell development? I would watch that. Okay, let's import data.pexdocparsec.bytestring and a, let's let's go. So we're we're looking at parsec. Do 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 do. Some people have been looking at their personal stats in Advent of Code. And I think I have those. Yeah, stats. Uh, person, where is the personal stats? Uh, am I? Does anyone know? Let me see. One. Because uh, like someone was looking at like how fast they did stuff, and uh, I mean that's cool. Yeah, donated money. But uh, it's not about doing it fast, but it's about it's about having fun, right? Oh, leaderboard. Personal stats, right? And apparently it starts counting once you open it. So I started at 12, no, 13, what? Okay, so I have zero score because I am I'm not competing, right? I start way later. I don't see... I thought, like, you could see... I thought you could see, um... Oh, I think this is, like, from when it was released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense, right? And we start at 5 UTC, right? So... Anyway, let's look at Parsec. Uh... Not that. Let's see. Looking at Parsec, we are going to... Take text.parsec by string, and we're gonna say 
parse from file and we just give it a file path and it returns an io parse error or a so what do we want uh, yeah so we are going to say get input is not going to be fmap lines it's actually going to be it's going to be uh it's going to be a uh, parse from file and then here we say parse input and then it's going to take in the file path and what are we trying to get we are trying to get uh so it's going to be a parser so we're going to write the parse input is going to return us uh it's going to return uh an integer which is going to be the id and it's going to return us a list of maybe ints and we're going to say x is x is nothing right uh parser input okay this is going to be a parser parser input equals do 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 okay now let's now, now we're writing a parser this is what haskell is good at especially parsing combinators they're cool let's see um so we're parsing byte strings and we're gonna write a parser do, 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 do. this is the harry's heller lo-fi christmas playlist by the way so it's got a lot of christmas stuff in it so let's see char no string string is not what we want we want char because it's going to give us it's going to give us a string so we're going to say first okay so do so first line is going to be uh we're going to parse so we are going to parse um we're gonna parse and we're gonna say take while one i think i think that's what we do a do 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 delicious gear drink yes timmy i'm back home now i can have access to infinite skier mm. that moment when the skier hits good stuff uh let me see theories of the prim prim take while uh Parsec, take while one. Apparently, take while one is like that is okay. That is an auto parsec, but they're apparently super fast if you just take while one. And let's see. Okay, we're going to import. So that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to import text dot parsec dot char, and then import text dot parsec dot prim. And so here we are going to parse digits uh so let's see a d d d d d d d so we're gonna parse we're gonna parse digits until we don't get more digits right and then and then we're going to then we're going to let me see um do, 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 do. so this is yeah this is gonna be okay so end of line yes letter digit text digit arc digit char so we're gonna let me see what if i do just a Yeah. Parser parse is satisfied F for any character which yeah, okay. Let me let me see. Cause I don't use I've never used Parsec. Actually, I always so tokens. Yes. So let's see, uh, many, many one, 
many one digit two uh, digs equals many one digit uh, so here and then we have to define this crazy function yeah it's it's overkill but it's included by default uh, yeah I mean you're you're not wrong uh, but uh, I think I I want to see what happens okay uh, so we're gonna parse the digits many one digits uh, so so we're gonna say import data dot char and what you have to do is you have to so here we're gonna write a function that says you know string to int um, and that is going to be taking a string and it's gonna return some int and so string to int equals this crazy function so you have fold l so um so you start with zero and then you say you, you take in the digit and, and you take in the x right what is the like i've said even earlier what how what is the type of fold l again i always forget i mean yeah we could use read maybe but that's not cool right yeah b so b a b so it's gonna be so it's gonna be current x and then d and then we're gonna say 10 times x plus two into digit no digit to int of d you see how it works this this like takes the number and then every time you add something new it multiplies the previous one by 10 and then adds it it's mm, this is like this is taken from uh the i think the read implementation or something like that but uh, it's it's written by eric May meyer this way of doing it but it works um so what if we just say here return string to int of digs comma and then just an empty list what what does this then show us? Maybe int. And why can't I print this? Because oh, get input right. Uh, get data data no what is why is it um right so this is gonna be an either either okay let's see here uh, yeah this is gonna be an either parse error or what um uh, it's complaining Let's see, uh, what? Ugh. Either parse error A, right? Parse... Oh, right. Yeah, either parse error, maybe, but this is not in scope. What? Where's parser error defined? Import hiding. No, I mean I'm importing everything. But it's just this parse error isn't in scope. Parse error. Text.parseg.error. Okay, yeah, I think I just because I didn't import text.parseg, I just imported like everything. And okay, and I don't need this prim thing. Okay. Nice. Let's print it. I think it's gonna give us a parse error because Yeah, I could have used holes. But like the holes tell us what we should put there, but they don't tell us like what we can import. 
I think it would give us a parse error because like we didn't parse the entire input and we'll say like incomplete input now oh, see we parsed it okay now the rest we are going to do a, a so timetable is going to be set by set by one parse tt okay and then we're going to say uh, what does set by one do 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 uh set by set by one takes a parser uh okay yeah so set by one this is gonna be this is gonna be here a char comma and uh, and uh, this is gonna be option option maybe option maybe of uh do, do, let's say let's say here let's see parse number is just gonna be that's going to be uh what is it it's gonna be string to int over uh many one digit um and this is not fine because ambiguous type variables so parse number is going to be a parser of a or int okay so this is going to be parse option maybe uh so many one di so digs so so we're going to say here id is a parse number then we're going to say skip skip uh we're going to say skip a uh, skip skip many one no yeah skip many one many one and then it's gonna be sep is second oh yeah I mean, I think I got it working, right? Let's go skip many one, uh, and we're gonna use these. Do 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 do. Uh, end of line. End of line. So we skip the line, and then we 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 separate the option maybe of parse number. So if it can't parse a number, it's just gonna give us a maybe. So a uh, time. So here, and then we're gonna do today a. Uh, it's gonna be id comma timetable and this is not okay because set by one returns a maybe option maybe uh, okay yeah sorry that is true set is second listen to chat let's see Do 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 do. This is a bit slower uh, because this machine isn't quite as powerful, and uh, it doesn't have a graphics card. So like the rendering of the stream is taking a lot of the CPU. Okay, just seven, just thirteen, comma nothing. Uh, it should be doing more, right? Seven thirteen, and then it says nothing, and then it stops after it after it fails once. That's it. Uh, that's it. Uh, not what we wanted, right? Okay, then let's uh, then let's do let's just do it differently, right? So let's just say choice. So the choice is gonna be uh, so so it's going to be. So it's gonna be set by okay and then we're gonna have the char but this not gonna be parse number it's going to be a choice between just f mapped over parse number or a 
it's going to be you know it's going to be char x into uh pure pure nothing and it says i don't need these parentheses i don't like that i did i had to do this though i thought set by one would not fail anyway now we have the correct right all right now we got the input uh let's no no doesn't work what is the type of uh type of that well how do you pronounce that uh uh so i think it doesn't uh work let's see i think yeah so it takes an a no i think it doesn't work i mean it should work though and it says not in scope I think that should be in scope, right? It's in control.monad Right? Yeah, I need to separate again like this What? Oh, yeah, this is the wrong symbol It's not exported why are you telling me that it's <laughs> Let's see now we have uh, this operation and it complains uh, Do I need to say nothing before What if I apply it here I don't think it works. So it it takes in a functor. So I think the issue is that like this char thing happens in the parsec monad, right? And not in the maybe monad. Let's see. This is the same as doing BS and then pure A. But, uh, so A, B, S, yeah. <laughs> but it's complaining. Uh, that... That this whole thing... Okay, this is a redundant bracket. Couldn't pass... Uh, I think the issue is, see, it's trying to return a maybe, but it's working in the monad. The thing you're putting goes first. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that works. Cool. See, we have some S Haskell experts in chat. It's all about knowing the symbols. Haskell is like math, right? It's just a game of symbols. <laughs> yeah, that it looks better, right? Just nothing. Let's highlight the symmetry. Wow. That is nice, right? Good stuff. Okay. Now we have the input i think yeah complete overkill but you know that's what we're here for okay let's see a let's see here uh wait oh, g oh g so i'm using vim key binding so i always press 
big G to go to the end, small G to go to the start. Good stuff. Okay, solution one. It's going to take an int and a list of maybes. Okay, and we are going to return an int. Solution one. Okay, let's see here. Uh, we're just going to return. We're not going to return anything. So, solution one. Uh, okay, okay, so where. So, let's, let's get all the ints. Uh, times is going to be cat maybe. Of. Uh, so, this is going to take, you know, our ID. Uh, let's say shuttle ID. Shid. Sid is better. And then times. And it's going to be. Uh, times. Maybe. And then it's going to be times. Maybe. And we have to import data. Up maybe. Cat maybes. Okay. And then we have all the ints. Now. We. So now we have like a list of ints. Now I want to do, uh, I want to do, a. Uh, I want, what I want to do is I want to take the, so I have that times, I want to take, uh, so we're, we're going to say, uh, next departure. It's going to be a map ID uh, SID and this is going to be oops this is going to be mod over uh, times and then I'm going to I'm going to sort that and then I need data dot list we're gonna sort that uh, and we are going to take maximum. Now we're gonna take the minimum of uh, next departure. We don't have to sort it, but I want to see here. So I'm gonna say trace show id. I don't actually need this one. Um, we don't need data list anymore. Import debug dot trace. Let's see. Let's let's see. Let's see solution one. And this doesn't work because we return our either parse error. So we're gonna say fp do parse uh, fp. A case parse of if it's a left parse error we're just gonna say error if it's, if it's a p we're gonna say error p show otherwise we're just gonna say return res return res Do, 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 do. What is um, case parse of? Yeah, if it's left, then we're gonna return error. Let's see here. Now, okay, yeah, and it's a problem here is that I want to return this. Uh, like this. Let's see. Debug that trace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, one three fifty four nine eight. Hmm. Okay. So, so it says one. So, so let's see. What is a 939 divided by 7? It's 134. So 134 times 7. 
Yeah, I'm using Google as a calculator. I mean, they have a lot of good people working there, right? So you should trust their results, right? Uh, so yeah, 104 times 7 is 938, and 1938 plus 1 is indeed, uh, is indeed 939. So, this seems legit. Let's see, uh, the 7, so, okay. The only bus you can take is bus ID 59. It doesn't depart until it's time at 944. What? Why? Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Trace show ID. Hmm, I think I'm doing something wrong, right? I'm not supposed to take the maximum. I'm supposed to take the minimum, maybe? So for 59, it's returning the max. It's returning. That's the maximum. The earliest bus you could take is bus ID 59. Do I need to flip around the modulus? Oh, right. So... So the problem is... Okay. Uh, bus 7 departs at 938. And that just left one minute ago, right? Now, bus 59, 944. Um, yes. Let me see. Am I... I think I might be doing the modulus... Wrong. Uh, let's see. Like this. What do we get then? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's of course. Yeah, yeah. This is this is wrong. Okay. Okay. So. Hmm. I also need to include the IDs. Okay, let's see. Um, so if I say here, div, let's see, div. Mm, I go because like this is some modulus problem, right? But I think I'm I'm thinking something wrong here. Okay, we map this with the times. So we do the division. Uh, and then we're gonna say, we'll go sip with, wait. Uh, next departure time. So we take these and we do sip with. We're gonna multiply. And then we're gonna say here uh, times. And it doesn't like this. Uh, next departure time. Because the type is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it meant... It means that the bus left one minute ago. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that is true. This is... So, here... So, this is how long ago they left, right? So, we're gonna do mod... Mod... And then we're going to do minus. 
and we are going to say oops so yeah so this is how long until the next bus so yeah so it's the difference um so now we're going to say um so Okay, so we found the next departure time minus uh, we found the right one. Now we're gonna see like which which one is it, right? So let's see. So here we're gonna map over times. We're gonna say you know, we're gonna say X. We're gonna say x comma sid so x minus sid mod sid mod x isn't there can't i like just take the negative modulus isn't that a thing you know i can just do sid mod period negate uh i think that i think i can do that let's see let's let's remove this here This is this is what I should be able to do, right? Yeah, exactly. So we take the negative modulus. Then we get what we were thinking, right? Um so and now we then we take the maximum negative modulus. It doesn't work. I mean we're getting the minus five here where we were getting five earlier. So we just negate twice. Bloop, bloop, bleep, bloop. See? Same as doing the minus thing. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Like, the, there's a trick with moduluses, but like negative moduluses are a bit weird. But they work. Let's see. X over to X comma. No, now we're gonna say. Wait, we have to know the time, right? So we have to say, what's the idea of the earliest bus? You can take the airport multiplied by the number of minutes you'll need to wait for that bus. Okay, so this is gonna be. We're gonna take the negate here twice. Okay, now let's just say, uh, let's just say, let's do a funny thing. Minimum, minimum by, uh, and then we do this function, and times, this is from data.list, allows us to specify uh, minimum by uh, all right it takes an ordering minimum by uh, do I have to do like on here something like that this is from data dot function so I could so, so I, I've done this like sort on data dot function on do, 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 do. So on takes in. Do, 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 do. I think uh, I think this is yeah. Compare on that is correct. Compare. Oops. On this function. Oh yeah, now we, now we, so, so we say, oops. 
next departure time so this is gonna give us 59 Dude, yeah 59 next departure time times uh, how many time how much do i have to wait that is going to be next departure time uh, times so this is going to be the sid times s uh, next departure time times the how long do i have to wait that is sid minus sid a uh, oops oops uh, oh my god i'm pressing the keep pressing the wrong button here like this right yes sid div a uh, next departure time uh, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, this is going to be fifty nine. How long do I have to wait? Uh, that is going to be... I have to wait a uh, next departure time minus Sid... Oh, plus the Sid and then we take the negative modulus mod negate a uh, next departure time three one eight six no that's not correct what is this gonna be trace show id this is minus five and oh okay i should just negate this right this should be correct ding 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 295 that's that's the one yeah don't need here, don't need here. Always nice to have HLint telling you where you need parentheses or something. Double negate does the same thing. Yes. You gotta negate that stuff. Okay. Works for our test input. Do. Let's see. How does it do on the input? I think this one is going to be fine. Let's see. Input. Get the puzzle input. Oh, wow. So many X's. Good thing we have a good uh, parser, huh? Am I wrong? Compile it. And... Linking. And then we run it again. 27 milliseconds. 4315. Let's see. Is it gonna be correct? Oh no. Whoop whoop! We got the first one! Only took us an hour, but we did write a parser. And we did a do a double bunch of double negations, right? Talking about my t-shirt and stuff. Anyway, let's continue. Part two is going to be harder. It's usually like that. Not always. So, one gold coin for anyone that can find the earliest time. So, such as the first bus ID departs at that time. And each time we this bus departs at that Wait a minute. For example, suppose you have the same list of bus IDs as above. An X in the schedule means that there are no constraint on what bus IDs must depart at that time. The 
the earliest timestamp called T such that bus ID 70 parts of time T bus 13 types of time. Okay. This is gonna be this is like gonna be some Chinese remainder theorem. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be some modular stuff. I remember I did so much modular stuff uh, Back in the day We're gonna have to look up Chinese remainder theorem That's how it's gonna be. Okay, so uh, Bing 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 Okay, let's uh, let's figure it out Let's uh, let's just start by looking at our input. No, this is day ten, day thirteen. Uh, let's start by looking at our input. Bring, bring, bring. But yeah, does anyone doubt the benefit of a good education? Instead of iterating through all the things, we're like Chinese remainder theorem. It's going to take us as long to look up Chinese Remainder Theorem and learn it, but it's going to give us an O of 1 answer. It's going to be epic. So, uh, here I'm going to say... Okay, this is going to be... This is going to be... I don't know. Undefined. I'm just going to return us on it. But we're just going to... Yeah, let's see. So times maybe, and then I'm gonna do sip zero and so on with times maybe. So it's gonna give us income of blah blah blah. Integer. Yeah, that is true. It's gonna be an un no, I'm so I'm I I'm gonna do int. Because advent of code usually works with int 32. But okay, let's say integer. I mean, all the Chinese remainder theorem stuff works with integer. Let's just say here uh, times head uh, fs dot of head of times. And I'm just gonna do it this way because I want to do trace show ID. So we sip uh, with zero, and then we filter by a is just dot fst. Boom, boom, boom. Why is this wrong now? It's because this is an int. No, this will return. Hmm. Uh, could match click a type int. FSD. And then it's complaining that oh this is supposed to be from just a second right read the bottom of the form oh okay jeez this is this is bigger than yeah let's do integers uh let's see Filter is just no, this is gonna be second. And uh, this is gonna be SD. Couldn't match expected type. No. I just, I just want to see, you know, if we did the list correct. And what is it complaining about now? Line 36? Oh. 
no longer relevant. Uh, we don't care about this anymore. Now let's let's just run it. We're gonna be getting a lot of numbers out. Oh no, not a lot of numbers, but let's see. Ding, 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 ding. Your mic is fluffy. Yeah, this is like a for extreme wind. Like I have I have another one that is just like more regular mic, but this is for extreme wind. And if you know anything about Iceland, it's good to have a windshield. All right, a uh, zero one four six seven. Yes. Okay. Now we want to find X such that uh, so so X is going to be a modulo of the first number. So it's going to be a modulo of seven, and it's going to be the second one it has to be modulo one of 13 as a well, modulo 4 of 59 modulo 6 of 31 modulo 7 of 19 now chinese remainder theorem do 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 okay uh let's actually let's so we have the times here we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say x uh, we're gonna say x comma just x just y two x comma y no because we we don't want to just we don't want the just stuff If the modulo was one, then the bus left one minute ago. Uh, yeah, but we want it to be zero, right? Oh, minus one. Yeah, okay, I think that's correct. So, let's negate. That that was what we learned earlier, right? We didn't want we didn't want, we wanted to find the 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 with the, the the negative one, right? All right, so zero. So this is gonna be uh, we was minus seven, minus thirteen, minus fifty nine. No, wait. We're not negating that. We're negating this x here. Um, bam, ba, da, dum, ba, dum. When did the music stop? I forgot to press replay. I'm gonna put my favorite one on this. I like this one. It's called Ice Cream in Winter. It's good stuff. So, minus one, minus four, minus six, minus seven. Now, Chinese remainder theorem. Yeah. So, we have A1 equals uh, mod N1, right? So, this is exactly what we're trying to solve, right? X should be zero modulus N1, and it should be, you know, minus one modulus 13. So, uh, the th that if the N1 and I are pairwise co-prime, you know, I think we can assume that, oh, where's the post? Can you show it to us? Can you like link it? We can just look at that instead of the Wikipedia article, right? Or does it like include a solution? If it includes a solution, we don't want it. Let's see. I'm clicking it. I'm clicking the link. Chrono Kirby. Oh no, it came up in the Chinese reminder. Yeah. Uh, I'll look at this a bit later. Okay, it's just CRT. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we were talking about. We want exactly this. Ding, ding, ding. I like this cat. Bezuot's algorithm. All right. Thirteen. 
So we have to do GCD, Euclid, Extending, Besu, Chinese Remainder Theorem, two equations. Okay, we're doing all of this stuff. I mean, this is essentially what we're doing. Right? And put that in here. Uh, wait. No, why can't I? Oh, this is not... I have this issue where, like, I'm using the beta version of Chrome, but then the link's open in... Yeah, exactly. If the if these aren't prime numbers, they're gonna be not co-prime, right? So exactly, we have a base of weights. So ding ding ding. Let me see. Ding 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 ding. A solution of the system of congruence is sum from I up to K A I one M I N N I one. Okay, there exist integers. So what is the n i n one here? Uh, let n i be n over n i. So the big n here is um. Not just the big n. Is that the number? That's the number of n, right? Um, bing, 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 bing. Hmm. Okay, so I wanna, f I wanna find this here. So the result is going to be the sum of, uh, so the result here So the result sum of What do they call this? A Well thanks Danny Root Oh, the product of all the modulus is you're taking. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so... Let's see, let's see. Because I... Let's see. Uh, uh, big N. It's gonna be the... The product... Of... Uh, map second of times. What is big N? Uh, I think I might have to convert these to integers actually. So int to integer. To integer. Easy enough. Uh, well, let's just map to integer here. So what's what's the what's the big N here? Just wanna see. It's gonna be a big number, right? We're multiplying so many numbers together. Oh, that's not the biggest number actually. Okay, so we map you have the big N. Okay, and then so and then we have to So like I like this post, but it's like it's too close to the solution. Probably too close to the solution, like, because I, I could just copy the thing you wrote in solve, and it would just essentially be solved, right? But I wanna, I wanna try it, try it out a bit more. So, okay, so we, yeah, extended Euclidean algorithm. Okay, so we have to, so this is the x here. Is going to be the sum of uh, 
So I, I'm gonna have Sugal. So it's gonna be it's gonna be sip with three, right? Yeah. So it's gonna have the sum of sip sip with three sip with three function of the a and the and the n and the n no, yeah and the wait like m first right uh sub sum of uh, a a y m i n i okay uh sip with m m m and then n of uh a times m times n it, uh let's is not supposed to be like this sum of the sip with takes in three lists uh map the the a the ais are going to be that's the numbers here right ai mod mm, it's going to be the map of second of times i think and then it's going to be m's m's and n's m is n is map of second of times right uh let's see i guess i'm getting a bit confused here right so the the so we're trying to find the x exactly so so x should be should be so it should be the so what is the a1 that's it so the seven yeah so zero mod seven should be n1 right and then so yeah the second one should be minus one mod 13 so the n's are so the n's are going to be map first uh no, the ends are gonna be map first the map second of times the a's are gonna be map first of times so let's say here it's gonna be so we found all the a's we know the a's and the ns and we now we have to ca compute the m's um so it's reducing to solving initial problem k equations to a similar problem with k minus one equations yeah that's the basic weight uh the bezel is what i don't know how to pronounce it bezel uh, identity applies and um, so we have to have so that you know, we have we're fine we're figuring out so the uh, this integers m i and n i such that uh, okay so that we can figure out m1 and m2 we can compute them by the extended Euclidean algorithm. Let's see. Um, so we have N1, so that's gonna be NI and the small NI. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so the MS, so going to be compute uh, ms and this is going to take in an n i uh, so that so the so the big n i where big n i that's going to be big n divided by n i uh, oh i think i need to do it's going to be div so we have big N i and then we have N i and then we 
we we have to find the m1 and m2 so the big mi so this is going to be big mi big mi and these are going to be map compute ms to the ns right uh, big mi is going to be undefined So we have ni here Now we only need to find these Small ni here, yeah, okay uh, So in addition to the greatest the other yeah which are integers x and y such that okay so so ax plus by so we find a x and y so we we compute the gcd so uh so okay so big mi so i have to say because i can't say mi i think that's going to be like it's going to think it's a data constructor all right uh big mi a mi equals a gcd of gcd ni a big ni all right but no we we should have the gcd should be one right Bezout's identity algorithm. Um, let's see. Dun 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 dun. Let's see, Bezo's identity algorithm. Let's see, case of two moduli, then Bezo's identity. Yeah, let's just look at that. Bezo's identity is the following. Let A be there exists with a greatest common divisor exists integer x and y such as ax plus by is d. Okay, um, we just need to figure this out. Mm. Let's see. If A and B are not both zero and one pair of co Bezos coefficient FAQ compute all pairs, okay. This is a bit rough, right? Let's see, so we want this to be one. We have to find out such that uh, the greatest common divisor is is um, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's let's find out Bezout's identity algorithm applied to the ones we know big big ni and ni okay where okay so and bezu's identity algorithm is going to take an integer and another integer and it's going to return a pair of integers bezu's identity algorithm 
Thanks for the follow, Leibniz. Uh, disciple. I bet the Leibniz disciple likes monads, huh? Am I wrong? Uh, if A and B are not both zero and one pair of Bezos Cobb has, has been computed, e.g., using the X, then all pairs can be assigned in the form X minus. What is this? Is a plus. But it, like. I don't know if you guys see this, but on my screen, like this plus isn't it? Like it didn't render the, didn't render the, the. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, so we are trying to compute uh, x and y. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a and b. Okay. Um, So it says it might be computed using the extended Euclidean algorithm. I am not... Okay, modular integers. To one should remark the best bit of coefficient is not needed and thus does not need to be computed. That's true. We only we, we only need the big MI, right? Mm, let's see. Does T or more exactly the remainder of division of T by N is a multiplicative inverse of A modulo? Oof. I have this book, but it's in Sweden. Let's see. So, to adapt, so this we return T. Okay, let's see. While new R is not equal to quotient. Okay, let's just let's just translate this algorithm into high school. Chrono Kirby. I think you use the integer case here, not the modular case. Um, but it's only talking about integers, right? Um, Let's see. The computation stops. Okay. Um, oof. Baby. Um, this is the extended one, right? I am feeling a bit woozy. It's okay. Um, let's see. We're trying to implement this Bezos algorithm. We have a solution already because Chrono Kirby has it in his blog post, but we don't want to use that directly. We want to work for this, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Now we, so we just need to figure out... Oh, here, this shouldn't be integral, it should be integer. So, what are we doing so far? We are, so, we're trying to find... So, 
x x comma y such that ax plus by equals one um that's correct right yeah okay so this is gonna be some euclidean stuff um Okay, it's easy to check whether values, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. It implies that the solution brings to the amendment perfection by testing the values modulo n is equal to Okay, so the product of moduli, this method works well for handwritten computation with the product of moduli or something. Wait, let's see. Uh, what did we get here? What was the big N? Let's run it again. Um, oops. Get data. Uh, it's going to be undefined. Let's run it and compile. I just want to see what the like the product of the moduli is for for uh, for the input. Let's see, because uh, it's it's gonna be a huge number, right? Yeah, this is a very big number. <laughs> Get some water. Uh, hold on for a second. Important to stay hydrated, right? Okay, now. So we're looking at Bezuas in the identity. So structure solutions, example proof, generalization, history. We're, so we're just trying to figure out uh, Okay, if G is the greatest common divisor for two polynomials a b not plus zero there and there are two polynomials u v such that a u plus b v equals g this the interest this is results in the case of polynomials is that there's okay and so the output computes G but we if we if we want to fix G so it's at G is one extended Euclidean algorithm that's what we were looking at earlier right uh, now And computes in addition to the greatest common divisors G, C, D of integers A and B, also the coefficients of Bezoas in tender G, which are the integers X and Y such that. So let's just see here. Uh, Hugo, is there an implementation of GCD? Yes. Nice. Do -do -dum -dum. Do -do -do -dum -dum. Do -do GCD uh, 
This laptop is so slow. I mean, it's not slow, it's just doing so much, right? Okay, but it's in the preload. What? Said it was in the preload, right? GCI. So this returns the greatest common divisor of A and B. So let's let's right here. Uh, let's just see. You know what is GCD of big and I and. And I just want to see what this is, and then the compute MS, and then we're going to say head of MS trace show ID of MS. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, but all of them return one. Nice. So, yeah, so that is exactly. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. I was like wondering, oh she, do I do I have to do I have to figure out to change it such that the GCD is one? But I, I don't have to change that, right? Because we have, we have defined, we've defined big NI as a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we multiplied everything and then we divided by, we divided by, uh, so the thing is, okay. Uh, because like big ni is a uh, so big ni is equal to you know n1 times n2 times nk, right? And these are all co prime, so you know, big ni, uh, big ni, right? Okay, this is this is the thing, this is a trick. Big and I divided by N I like N I will not be a factor in big N I because all of us all of these N's are co prime. So like this will be uh so big N I you know uh so the, the, the greatest common divisor here, so N I is not gonna be a factor in big N I essentially. So so we have this G C D a bright a comma b is one so we just have to find the x and y right and then we can use the grades these this um this g gcd okay uh let's see here finally notice okay and then compute y at the end uh Saving memory, accelerating variables, following algorithm, uses parallel assignments, blah blah blah. Okay. So this is equivalent to similarly this will lead to following the codians. Okay, so this is this code, but then it's saying that there's something else also. Why is there why why are there oh sorry, why are there two codes here? Proof section. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm just wondering here is why why are there two codes? One can solve why for a given a b x g c d a b. That's an optimization above the curve. It's only compute the s k sequences. Okay. So let's uh, let's define this in Haskell. Okay. Uh, oops. The pseudocode, okay, G C A So extended G C D. Um we're gonna 
right right like this it's gonna take in an integer and an integer and we're not gonna okay, we're gonna just return a pair of integers let's see integer and extended gcd a b equals extended gcd uh prime so uh, of zero and then old s is gonna be one and then this is gonna be r b and a where extended gcd prime of s old s uh r and old r equals okay so now we're gonna say while r is not equal to zero do okay so we're just gonna say here uh let's see so x so this is gonna be the same extended gcd prime s old s zero old r equals this is the base case if b equals zero if b is not equal to zero uh, uh okay so case so if b equals zero uh, so the gcd of a and b will be one so we don't care about that well let's let's just let's let's just return all of them right uh if b equals zero then it's going to be old s comma uh zero comma old r else it's gonna be old right now let's not do it like this because it's always gonna be old s right what do I think programming will be like on Kong? Yeah, it's gonna be awkward. There are some very, very good scientists working on very, uh, you know, very good programming languages for, uh, for actually, what do I, for quantum computers, but, but, uh, we're not quite there yet, but I think that's how we're going to do it. Where Bezu equals... You know, we're going to have the good... Uh, yeah, I, that's... Hmm. Yeah, isn't it like probabilistic programming in some sense? Uh, but it's going to be... It's going to be hard. Quotient... The quotient is just div, right? Uh, what? Wha yeah, I think it's that's just div, no? Then quotient. Let's just write it directly. A quotient times R. Quo what the quotient of quotient of old r minus old s times a uh, and b else uh, zero and here uh, quo the quotient is just div right. I think it's just going to be div. Div. Okay, and extended. So if it's zero, then we don't care about the s. Otherwise, we do a loop. S old s r. Okay, so the quotient is exactly uh, where q equals uh, old r div uh, r what is uh, this is equal to 
it's gonna be a loop it's energy it's the d uh, s prime old so it's gonna be s is gonna be this and r prime and you know and this is gonna be r prime and old and it's gonna be r again q is gonna be old r div r uh And we don't have to do this, so we just have to say r prime is equal to old r minus q times r, and uh, s prime equals uh, uh, it's going to be old s minus q times s. All right. once yeah but so the thing is like I, I i did my maths right but we i did it all in icelandic i'm always like what is quotient and divisor i should i should really read or learn all of math in english but uh, yeah okay so old s old r minus old s times a l zero uh Okay, now let's see what this is, right? Bling, 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 bling. Uh, this is gonna be a big, uh, uh well let's see what is it gonna be it's gonna be old s b a old r equals extended gcd of uh big n i and n i right so the bezo is never gonna be one the gcd this old r will be one right so we're going to be looking at old s and bezwa t let's see um trace show id and let's return i think we return the b i'm just want, i just want to see like the trace of what it So okay, uh what? Oh, the bees are all zero. Gling gling Uh yeah, so these bees are all gonna be zero. Uh, so I guess we are looking for this number here minus six So these I mean and the old R's they all turn out to be one right that's exactly what we wanted uh, So we're only looking at the old s Now that is gonna be the big mi uh, Now we're only looking for the old s Okay, yeah, this is, I think this is good. Bring, 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 ding, ding, ding. Okay, um, we're getting negative results. So the sum here is negative. Is the sum here four? Hmm. 
Yeah, that looks weird, right? So, uh... Okay, you should chat be able to check that a times x plus b times y is equal to one. Yes. Because this number for the test input is not at all. It's not at all uh is this here yeah, this is not at all this, right? Okay, so we should yeah, so it shouldn't be zero, right? Um, let's see. Uh, so this should be big and I times a uh, I have. So what are the S, S's and R's here? Statement, uh, okay, the S and R. This is, these, uh... To compute the SK sequence, which yields the B's bezo. Yeah, so we want the bezo confusion X. And then compute Y at the end. Let's see. Let's. I think we should write this code instead because there's something. There's something wrong with the. With the stuff. Let's see. R, S, and T. I'm just gonna, I'm a bit confused what the X, yeah, X, Y, G, C, D, A, B, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so X, Y, the A, B, so it's A times old S, big N, uh, plus. Uh, uh, N I times B, and then we return all this. I think we should be returning the B, right? But it's always zero, so that doesn't work. I mean, yeah, this is just. So we get minus one. Let's see. something wrong here right yeah let's let's go to the this one there's something going on here that we're not quite getting uh, 
So this one seems good, right? Okay. Uh, so we, the extended A B. Okay. So we initialize it by. This is gonna be. old r r and then it's gonna be old s s and then it's gonna be old t t and then we are going to cat re we're gonna say so the old r is going to be so it's gonna be r r prime uh s s prime uh t t prime so we're going to initialize this. So old R, R is going to be A and B. This is going to be uh, old S is going to be 1 and S is going to be 0. And T is going to be 0 and 1. What is it complaining about here? Okay. Uh, extended G. So while R is equal to 0. So okay. If R is 0. old r uh zero uh old s uh s old t t okay so this should be old s old t and so the quotients by the gcd the base so we're actually we're calculating the Bezois coefficients, right? So we want the oh sorry about that. Old S old T and then old R. We don't care about the S and T's. We don't care about this. Okay, now we are going to apply a T and T prime. Okay, so Q is old R divided by R, right? S so so yeah, we've already done the yield. So R is going to be old R minus Q times R. R prime. Uh, S prime is going to be old S minus Q times S. And T prime is going to be old T minus Q times T. Let's see here. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, now it actually does something. A times B, A plus B, Y is equal to 1. Which is exactly what we want. Uh, so, we want to return the B here. But now we get minus forty three four three one one four zero. Are we sure that we want this to be negative? Are we sure we want to be negating these x's? Let's see. Or we just get the same except negated. Hmm. We want to be returning the EVs, right? Uh, let's see. Two, two, this is not the right answer, right? We want one, ten, sixty-eight, seven, eight, one. Okay, so... 
big N I times old S plus N I times B is equal to one. And a And then we found x and y such that um, let's see uh, where we had it here right okay uh, S and T. Do we want to return the S and T? All right. Let's see. Let's go back to the Chinese remainder theorem. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Now let's go back here and let's see here. And there exists integers mi and ni such that mi ni plus me any me ni is equal to one. So this is big, big, big ni times old s. Oh, we want the we want the big ni times big. M I plus uh, M I. So we want big N I here, and then we want M I here, and this should be one. This is just going to be a irrefutable pattern, as it's called. Um, and what is wrong here? Yeah, big M I. It's gonna be wrong. No, should be right, right? Uh, so big N I. is equal to so so the uh you want to return old s Wait, wait, what, what is old S here? We're trying to compute the MIs, right? And so this is always one. So that is, you know, the result. We're getting the right result. Okay, so big NI times Big am I? Uh, am I doing this correctly? You multiply by small n instead of big N. Oh. Yes, that is correct. Uh, that is absolutely correct so let's just say this is going to be sip with it's going to be mn the will is going to be sipping with star and then it's going to be mns and compute mns and that is going to be
Uh, this is gonna be big MI times big NI. Let's see. Oh, we're still getting weird results. by taking the yeah by taking the modulus so you wanted me to do one modulus this what is the uh, mod big n right 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 this a uh, big mi one big big n i think yeah okay 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 i see so this is going to be like this and then the right example hmm. what a test input okay let me I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break actually Yeah, I'm gonna run that check right after. Give me, give me three minutes. Oops. Let's just let's just uh, let's just go over this. Let's just go over this a bit. So we have the extended GHC, right? So this finds a a comma b comma r such that a x times b plus b y. Uh, no, it finds x comma y. For a comma b 
uh, gives x comma y comma r such as ax plus by is equal to is equal to r okay uh, so then let's let's just check it out okay let's just say case of uh okay this is gonna be case of uh x comma y comma r uh a times x plus y times r uh b times y is equal to r res uh other goes to error uh invalid gcd because uh, i just want to be making sure that because i i don't think the ex i think we did the extended gcd here correctly uh but i don't think that's the issue okay so we we so this extended gcd is correct okay now let's so we erase this okay okay uh i mean you know we we kind of knew that already now let's look back at the chinese remainder theorem so let n i equals n over n prime be the product of all moduli but one as the n i are pairwise co-prime n and i y but the best way to blend is that there exist integers m i and m e such that m e n e plus m e n e equals one yes okay so now let's let's find let's find those So we want it to we want a1 to be to be we want this to be zero mod and i we want this to be so these are the a's right that's the first so this is trace show uh let's see let's see this is trace show id Okay, now we are going to be looking at the times. Let's see. Uh, I think those are correct, right? So these are, this is our A and this is NI. Okay. These are the N, N, NIs. So the big NI, uh, the big N, Big N is product of NS. All right. I, okay. Then, uh, MN, MINIs, uh, MINIs equals map. So this is going to take in an N and it's going to give us uh, extended GCD of uh, so the X is going to be so the big N and this is going to be divided oops Div divided by n and the other one is going to be n uh, and so the m and i's so let a n a big n i equals uh 
this here in extended gcd big n i big n i n comma big n i ding 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 i'll map this over the ends This is going to be giving us the the big ni. So these will give us the the ni, the M, big mi, and the small nis. So let's see here. Big ni a big. So it's going to be this. So it's going to be giving us the mi and the ni and the r and big ni comma n so uh, let's just return trace show id at me n i s zero And there's like a parenthesis is missing here. Uh, trace show. Let's just see. Let's just see what we're looking at. feel for what we're doing it didn't work this is the big n and then this is one entry okay so the n here is seven Okay, and the M, the, the big, the big, um, okay, hmm. Okay, so these are all one, so that's okay. So A, so AI, M I B N I. Let's see. Let's let have this be a comma n i n i and this is gonna be n i and it's gonna be n i this is n this is gonna be times we don't have the ends anymore uh, okay we need the ends okay let's see let big n i in so an extended g is a uh, the, so it should be giving us we're going to have an irrefutable pattern all right oh my god i have a nice line keyboard okay of a uh, a big mi comma 
mi comma one in okay i think we have to have a let in and we should just have another let here and then multiply times and then this is going to be big mi comma mi big ni ni yes So, so we and I'm, I want to see here. Yes. So what I want to calculate here is. Oh my God! I want to just calculate big M I times big N I plus M I times N I. Uh, and there's something wrong in here. Okay, so right. So this should be so big M I M I big N I N I A S. That's how. I'm, all of this in a big tuple and uh, this is not very clear is it uh no this is this one so it starts like this um, it's gonna be like this, and this is all gonna be one big tuple. And we're gonna say a a, a not gonna be a s. It's gonna be a times big m i times big n i, and this here is supposedly supposed to be the sum of the sipping. The, it's just gonna be the sum of the map second of a mini NIS. Uh, incorrect indentation. If. Uh, yeah, and then this is a function. Mini, mini, oh yeah, min, m i n i s, and where is it not in scope? In here, okay, mi, m i n i s. Uh, okay, and let's see. Okay, so this is the the big the big MI and the small MI. This is a big N I and this is N I. Okay, and then this is the A. So, and the result of multiplying this with this and this with this is indeed one. And then this is zero. Uh, is that, that is correct, right? This should be zero. Should it be zero though?
yeah i mean the the a here is zero so this should be zero now okay we have this so the one times this plus this amount of times this is equal to zero and the a is one so it should be uh one times big n i times one dun 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 this is same here but this is a minus a negative number am i supposed to take just the absolute value of this no right No, that's not correct. Because so we we found this right. A I M I N I is equal to A I. Uh. Okay. Let's see here. Dun 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 dun. Mm, and it's another center. Each of the a times big n should be modulo, should be a modulo. Yeah, exactly. A... Yes, yeah, so let's check that out. Okay, and now let's look at. A big m m i, a this. All of this. Oh, Come on. Like this. This. Mod. And I. Okay, let's just let's just make these into booleans. These are this is equal to one, and this should be a. We have true, 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 true. So it passes the sanity checks. be exactly a though but it happens for us to be exactly a right Okay, so how do we make it normalize? Oh yeah, yeah, that is true. So how do we how do we normalize the modulus? That's the question, right? Uh, so I do uh yeah, exactly. So I do I do modulus and I right no that's not true either no yeah this is just gonna be a right so we have to do mod Big N. Oh, okay. I 
Thanks for the subscription. Cersei Reyes. And Marty. I miss Marty. Uh, I am way too conf way too it. Because it's just it's just not working out, right? Because you know, I, I, if I do mod big and I get this number, which isn't, it's not what we want, right? Blip, 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 blip. So we found an X. Maybe we're just like not finishing the thing, okay? So we found an X such that. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, we have this. Okay, these are the times. Uh, so I just want to check. Okay, let x, so x is going to be this here, right? Uh, the sum of the map of the mini minus, okay. And then x res, let's see, map. Why does this keep I keep pressing the wrong button? Mod and so X modulus the number of map of uh, the NS. X res. So here it says zero four six seven. It should be. Oh yeah, that that is the A's, right? Let's see. So we have the number. Zero and then one, four, six, seven. And we want a time where the bus leaves one minute from now. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, That was when we, we tried, we should negate this, right? But then we get non-exhaustive patterns here. And then, you know, when we get that, then we get that the extended GCD is not one. This is a, this is Haskell, programming language Haskell. We're trying to solve day 13. And we have all these Chinese remainder theorems going on. You get to negate X. Yeah, but negating X is not going to... I mean, so what I'm saying is, you know, we have 
Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so we have these. Okay, let's negate X here, right? But you know, then I, I get the wrong results. So it needs to so zero. It needs to return one minute from now, four minutes from now, six minutes from now, seven minutes from now. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm negated that, right? Uh, but it's still, it's still giving me. Is it wrong? Yeah, four two three one one two two is a is in fact not ten sixty eight seven eight one, right? Let's see. 7 departs press 13 so this, so this would be 0 1 4 6 7 okay it is 0 1 4 6 7 so we have the times right yeah i mean but the the result is not correct right and we found an x such that Such that uh, x mod 7 is 0, especially now, and then x mod 13 should be minus 1, okay? Okay, so let's see. So 0. What if I do here, instead of two integer y, I do um, two integer y, y minus x. Okay, all of this mod just mod begin. Nice. Okay, but we don't need this. It was giving us the same answer, right? All right, we finally got it. Oof. We got like a big negative number. Yeah, this is... Because like, you know, we have the right approach. Like the Chinese remainder theorem. But then... It's just... Like, you have to <laughs> make it all... Because, you know, modular arithmetic is not my forte. Uh... So, yeah. Okay, so we're calculating this. I'm gonna do it like... Uh, 
Calculate, calculate this. Oof. Okay, so... Uh, what? Mini and eyes. Yeah, this is gonna be the some... Uh, some mini NIS mod big N. Yeah, I really should look up my Chinese remainder theorem again, right? Yeah, okay, so let's see. So we get the correct result. Now we don't need the NS, right? Oh, yeah, we need the. We need a big N. Ding ding ding. All right, let's uh, apply it to the input. Let's see what happens. Big number. Will it work? All right, we did it. <laughs> Oof! This is what happens if you fiddle around with the with the big modular theorem. I, you know, we could have we could have used a Chron Chrono Kirby's algorithm, but uh, yeah. And this is correct, right? So, so this was just taken from Wikipedia, right? We just did the GCD. We even have some error assertion here, which we don't really need. Um, but uh, uh, we did the solution. And you know, this is not a long solution, but you know, it's. There's a lot of tricky stuff here, right? And have I ever solved a problem like this before? I, I mean, not like this, but I've had to, I, I've had to use the Chinese remainder theorem for my maths courses. So not exactly like this, but something similar. Yeah, Timmy, show us your non-CRT solution. It's just iterating and, and checking if it works, right? Do you just like iterate for the... Iterate and then you do plus seven every time? It's gonna take a while, right? Link it to me, please. Post the link. Do, 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 do. Took a while though, didn't it, huh? If you're just joining us, we just solved day 13 of Haskell of um, additive code. And we did reason the Chinese remainder theorem, but it did take us a while. We took us a while to figure it out and get it right. But we did it. And uh, uh, let's see. It runs in 28 milliseconds on Windows with OBS and everything running. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Now we're waiting for Tim. He took my username to post the link to his version because I'd like to see it. But I think, you know, instead of just doing the Chinese remainder theorem thing, you kind of iterate through the numbers you take plus seven every time right tim is out of contact right now uh, so let's see big am i a Yeah, but at least we got it working, right? Uh, and uh, 
map as indeed times quite few lines of code let's open timmy's solution in the mine on Ooh. damn that is one line uh, yeah so you do plus seven every time right or plus the first one yeah every time and and you check So could you walk could you walk us through? The parser is not there. Does that turn out? What what was the first value for you, Timmy? For us it's 41. So I think Timmy's solution would uh, So PA here is a fold L1 reduced buses. So the, the the ID is going to be 41. So it's going to add 41 every time, right? And then we simply check. So we do 41. We find the first one such that that is remaining remainder is zero. Uh, wait, wait, so bus P, P, P offset. Okay, so it starts off with zero. And then you kind of keep going by multiplying with the... With the number you have so far. So I guess you kind of find the first time and then you keep going. Is that, is that correct, Timmy? How long did it how long does it take to run? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It kind of you first find the first one and then and then you 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 find the you keep going, right? And then you find the so you you find if you solve the first case essentially and then you keep going with the solution to the first case in mind. That works probably. Uh, works pretty well. Right, Timmy? Can we get a runtime? Can we get a runtime? I love that Timmy, though, he, like, created a data type for the bus. We just... have an int, maybe int, right? Not so cool. Yeah, uh, this is CRT. Uh, because... You, like, you, you find the first solution, right? And then you use that solution to to keep the iteration going. And that's kind of what the Chinese remainder theorem is doing here. And we have the two moduli and we have this solution. And then we, we kind of keep going, see? We're just solving an initial problem with K equations, so similar problem with K minus one equation. So iterating the process one actually gets the solution of the initial problem. So, so you solve this, right? You find a one comma two, so you kind of merge the first two. Um, but uh, so you find the first two, and then you keep going for the equations. And yeah. That's a good solution. I think it's better than mine. Mine is more... Uh, mine is too abstract. I mean, I think... But this is like kind of very explicitly we're using Chinese remainder theorem here, so... You know, we know it's going to work, but uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. But it wasn't really noticeable, so... So probably just a couple of milliseconds, but it's cool. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm going to leave you for today. 
been three hours, which is uh, a bit long, actually. And I'm gonna see if I can go for another walk. Another coronavirus walk. Well, that coronavirus is just like a quarantine walk, you know? You're allowed to... You go for a walk with someone else. You wear, both wear masks, keep two meters apart. That's allowed. That's what I'm gonna do. If it's not allowed, eh, some Icelanders can go ahead and report me. There's like a button on a web page where you can report. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do them, um... Later this week, maybe, maybe tomorrow? Uh, not today. I was gonna do them today if this solution was dependent on it. But, uh, yeah. So if I, if I'd finished this in, like, this in, um... You know, maybe an hour and a half or two, then I would have continued. But I think it's... Three hours is quite long already, right? I'm just, uh... I'm a bit poofed, you know, to use a scientific term. But also, I like that the stream worked out. I think, uh, I hope, uh, hope the audio was good. I think the output was okay. I, I see that I have like 225 dropped frames in total over, over three hours. That's not a lot of frames at 60 FPS. So I think, I think that it all worked out fine today anyway thanks for tuning in i'll be back tomorrow at five o'clock utc six o'clock in europe uh noon east coast us and uh thanks for joining and if you're still here you know consider following and uh and then you get a notification when i go live tomorrow it's not bad right of course if you want to subscribe with your Amazon Prime. That would be nice too, but we're not in it for subscriptions. We're in it to solve the advent of code and help Santa. And now I'm very curious what has happened to Santa so far, you know? Why is he booking shuttles? What happened? Did the plane crash? Nobody knows. Well, people already did previous two days know, but I don't know. So that's what I care about. Alright, thanks for today, and uh, see you all tomorrow.